This is Tracy. I am a video channel or just a place where we can play videos about true crime. And I'm going to call it True Crime with Tracy. And I'm going to start this out today with the very first one being about the person we've seen lately everywhere. Gypsy Rose Blanchard. And this is supposed to be involving a very infamous crime. But it doesn't seem like I'm watching all the TV shows, the talk shows, showing her on there. And they make her sound like she's precious. And I thought... Well, let me find out about her and see what I think. And I thought, tell everyone else. Now, don't come to me if I don't say everything perfect or or don't strap everything exactly how you've heard about it. But I've gone on the internet, looked and searched and found different places that tell me everything I wanted to know. And I'm going to try to tell y'all. So, this is the case of Claudine, Dee Dee, and Gypsy Rose Blanchard. It is supposed to be one of the most famous Munchausen by proxy cases that they've ever Ever come, come across and you may be asking what is Munchausen by proxy I will enter the same thing I've heard it a million times I thought I knew but the definition is psychological condition that causes a caregiver to engage in attention seeking behavior by making the person or people under their care ill or making people believe they are ill that's what it was called at the time when she went to court now it's called factitious disorder imposed on others it's an odd name for it, but I guess they didn't want to call it Munchausen by proxy anymore. What happened in this case is Dee Dee, the mother of Gypsy Rose, would make her child seem as if she was sick. But what she did with Gypsy started when she was a baby. She um, would say that she couldn't breathe even when she was a baby, said that she uh, had stopped breathing at one point. But the biggest things that she did to this little girl was she told her she was unable to walk. She she couldn't breathe right without an oxygen machine. She couldn't eat normally. She had to use a feeding tube. She couldn't, because she couldn't walk, they used a wheelchair. And they also said that later on, though, we find out after she has um, passed, Dee Dee has passed away, uh, Gypsy could walk, Gypsy could eat, and Gypsy could breathe without any assistance. So, let me say, uh, they moved from their original location because of the doctors started seeing things were wrong and she didn't want to talk about it. So she moved to Missouri. And when they moved to Missouri, uh, Dee Dee told people that the records of all the illnesses and all the things that were wrong with Gypsy were lost in Hurricane Katrina, which is could have happened, but it wasn't true. Um, in order for Gypsy to look more ill, more cancer-like, she shaved Gypsy's head. It, some of her hair did fall out, however, because of the medications that the doctors were prescribing her because the doctors because Dee Dee told him that she had cancer. I still have no idea how you could say you have cancer and get medication for it without being tested. That's why it, it, she seems insane. She also, because of the medication she was taking, had her teeth rotting out. So she had to have some of her teeth pulled. Another thing that occurred between September 2005 and 2008 in Missouri, Habitat for Humanity built her a pink house, specifically set up just for Gypsy to live in the home. Uh, while they were in Missouri, Aurora Missouri community, helped the family with charity events, giving her donations, and sponsoring Gypsy for trips and for medication. Now, between 2007 and 2009, the doctors, even in that area, started getting a little bit suspicious. They started noticing that Gypsy's health was better than they, Miss Dee Dee put out there. So, one of the doctors said Dee Dee was suffering from Munchausen by, by proxy, which made of course, Dee Dee go to a different doctor so that she wouldn't be told that because she said she didn't think she was suffering from that and of course she is or she was sorry she has passed this is part three february 2011 gypsy attempted her first time of trying to escape from her mother she tried to get away um she left the home she went to a science fiction type fair and she met this 35 year old man she was speaking to the man online already but she went to this science fiction convention and that's where she met him. She followed the man back to his hotel where Dee Dee found her. At this time, Gypsy is 19 years old. However, Dee Dee has made Gypsy think she's only 15. So she tells the 35 year old man that Dee Dee is only 15 years old and he was uh, messing with a uh, teenager, which scared the man to death. He thought she was older. And because of that, the man left her alone and Dee Dee 
took her daughter home, punished her. She smashed her phone, her computer. Uh, she changed her to her bed. She locked her doors. She put bells on the windows, the doors, and everything so she could hear if Dix, a Dixie, if, if Gypsy tried to get out of the house. In uh, October of 2012, Gypsy started sneaking on the internet and going to a Christian dating site. And while she's on there, she finds this um, boy. His name is Nicholas Goodjohn. He um, suffers from, and I don't want to say suffers, he has autism. He's not suffering from it. He's been diagnosed with autism. He lives in Big Bend, Wisconsin. She starts talking to him. She enjoys his company online. Um, she talks to him for over two years. They have a relationship. They have video phone calls. They have online messaging, all of which were kept secret from Dee Dee. So Dee Dee couldn't stop her from doing it. In part four, October 2014, Gypsy became friendly with the neighbor that lived near her. Her name was Aaliyah Woodmansey. Now, I, I'm sorry if I have messed that up, but her name will come on the screen later so you can see it so, so that maybe you know how to pronounce it right. <laughs> she started chatting with her. Um, she made, Gypsy made herself her own Facebook page and she started ch chatting um, online with with Good John there too. She did confide, however, with Miss Woodmancy that she was flirting with an older person online and that she thought she was in love with him and she wanted to run away and elope with him. She even told her that even though they hadn't had physical sex, they had had sex online um, through digital communication. They had engaged in romance. They had engaged in sexual explicit relationship through the digital communication for a while. And this worried Miss um, Woodmancy because she thought that um, Gypsy was only 15 years old, so she was very alarmed by it. But for some reason, she didn't say anything. She did know, but she didn't say anything. In part five, March 2015, they, the two, um, Good John and Gypsy, I guess we could call him Nicholas. I think it's Nicholas. Goodness, I can't remember his first name. I only know his last name. Name. Okay, Nicholas and Gypsy just devised a, pan, a plan so that they could get to see each other and hopefully get Dee Dee to like um, Nicholas. So they put a plan together and they decided they were going to meet up. Gypsy and, and um, Nicholas agreed to meet in person in March 2015. They made the <laughs> Nicholas had to come from um, Wisconsin to Springfield, Missouri to meet Dee Dee and Gypsy. They were planning to go to a um, Disney movie, Cinderella. They dressed up for it and everything. Um, the two met at the theater. Gypsy was dressed as Cinderella and Nicholas dressed as Prince Charming. And while they were at the movie theater, the mother still didn't know that Prince Charming was there to meet her. They went to the bathroom and uh, Gypsy had sex for the first time in the bathroom for the first time with uh, Nicholas in the bathroom at the movie theater. The meeting, the however, <laughs> After that did not go very well. Uh, Dee Dee did not like Nicholas once they were introduced. And by the time they got through with their date and Dee Dee took her home, Dee Dee punished Gypsy. So from there on, that made Gypsy and Nicholas start thinking about ways that they could get away where um, Gypsy could get away from her mother. And so they started plotting. In part six, June 9, 2015, Gypsy Rose Blanchard says she was addicted to pain, kill, pain pills. So she was taking them and it made it easier for her to not be so worried or care as much when she was thinking about killing her mother, Dee Dee. She decided that she wouldn't kill Dee Dee, that Nicholas would. And Nicholas came to uh, Missouri, got a hotel, stayed there, waited for Gypsy to notify her him when Dee Dee was asleep. And when Dee Dee was asleep, he was supposed to come and do the deed. And while at the hotel, he checks in, he waits. Gypsy indicates Dee Dee is now asleep. So guess what happens next? Of course, Nicholas comes to the house, comes in. Gypsy gives him a knife, some gloves, and some duct tape. And um, Gypsy goes to the bathroom. She covers her ears and she waits. While waiting, Nicholas has stabbed her mother 
17 times until she has passed away. After this, he, they both go and have sex on Gypsy's bed right afterwards. And after that, they get a cab and they take the cab to um, the motel that Nicholas was at. And the next day, they took a bus back to Big Ben, Wisconsin, where um, Good John lives. And they mailed the knife used in the murder from where they were originally, like when they were in Springfield. They mailed it to Wisconsin. It's very weird, but they didn't want to carry it on them, but they wanted to keep it. In part seven, June 14th, 2015, after a few days, 48-year-old Dee Dee's body was discovered in her home. But while this is going on, though, for June the 14th, 2015, Gypsy and Nicholas posted two updates to Dee Dee's Facebook page. To draw attention to the crime, they wanted to not be worrying anymore. They wanted people to know that she had died, and they wanted the police to find her. So, their two posts were, first, quote, that blank is dead. The second one said, I blank slashed that fat pig and raped her sweet innocent daughter. Her scream was so blank loud. Laugh out loud. And these are two messages written on Dee Dee's Facebook page by Gypsy and Nicholas. The messages, however, did make the people that were her friends and neighbors go get the police to come and check the home. And when they did, the, they found the body and they found Gypsy's abandoned in wheelchair, but no Gypsy. So it prompted people to start thinking that Gypsy had been kidnapped and the mother was killed in the process. Now, if you remember Miss Wood Nancy that um, Gypsy became friends with, she remembered that she had a relationship with Good John and she allowed the uh, police to go look at her social media and then it led to finding Good John's social media and it tracked the location down to the ID address of Good John, and so they were able to find out where they were. Now, at the time, they didn't know that Gypsy was there or that Gypsy was there of her own free will or whether she had been kidnapped or any of those things until they got there. On part eight, June 15th, 2015, just one day later, they go to Good John's home. He surrenders immediately. Gypsy was found there unharmed and later placed under arrest as well because originally they just thought she she was kidnapped. They didn't know she was initially involved in the crime at all, but later, she, after Good John is arrested and confesses, she confesses that they had planned the crime together and that they had done it for good reasons. They were taken back to Missouri where friends were happy at first because they got to see Gypsy. They thought she was, it was great that she was still alive and unharmed. What they didn't know is that she was part of the killing. The couple was bonded out of jail for a million dollars. The Springfield Sh Sheriff later said in a press conference, things are not always as they appear. Like the wheelchair sitting there, they thought somebody had taken her and kidnapped her, but that is not what, what had happened. A precursor to the revelations that Gypsy could not only walk, but had never been sick in the first place was a shocking story for everyone. Everyone thought she was sick. Everyone thought she couldn't breathe, that she couldn't walk, that she couldn't um, eat. All of those things were untrue. They did not find out until June the 15th, 2015. On July the 15th, 2016, Gypsy Blanchard agreed to plead guilty to second degree murder as part of a plea agreement. She was sentenced to 10 years in prison. She garnered some sympathy, however, from the defense, the prosecutors, and the public alike after the extent of suffering she, she went through because of her mother. Obviously, the mother had inflicted many things on her, such as medications, things that she was sick, that she had cancer, that she couldn't walk, that she couldn't eat, that she couldn't breathe. So she had been under a tyrannical mother. But at 19 years old, really? You know 19 year old people. I do. And I just can't see it. But back to the story. That's just me. Part 9. In 2018, she, the, part of her, I believe her plea agreement was that she would have to um, testify against Nicholas Goodjohn. And she later took the stand in Goodjohn's trial, revealing some more of the horrible details that the mother did to her and the reason why they had decided to kill the mother. Uh, in December 2018, Good John defense argued he had diminished capacity. They related it to the fact that he had autism and that she manipulated him, but 
they did believe that he killed Gypsy's mother, so he was found guilty, and he was sentenced to life without the possibility of parole. He is still fighting to this day, though, to try to get out of jail. As of February 22nd, 2019, he has been in jail for life. Part 10, July 2022, Gypsy's case is proved controversial. Uh, no, no joke. <laughs> With some people believing she did not deserve to be in jail at all. She killed because she thought there was no other way out of it is what some people thought or still think. However, she famously told 2020 that she felt freer in prison than with her mother. I don't think that's an however. I believe that's just her saying that she felt better there than she was with her mother. She felt like she was in jail there too. Her quote from 2020 is, The prison that I was living in before with my mom, it is like I could not walk, I could not eat, I could not have friends, I could not go outside, you know, and play with friends or anything. So she felt like she was in jail. Uh, more from that show 2020, she said, Over here, I feel like I am freer in prison than with living with my mom because now I am allowed to just live like a normal person. Oh, guess what she did again? She picked up dating again while she was in jail. And she ended up marrying Brian Scott Anderson on July of 2022. And September of 2023, she spends only 85% of her 10-year uh, sentence. She's now 32 years old, and they grant her parole, and she's able to get out. She gets out, though, a few months later, December 28th, 2023. I'm sure you've seen. Uh, she's at, when I wrote this, she was set to be released. She hadn't been released yet, but she's been released now. It's January 17th. She wanted to go see the Kansas City Chiefs because she wanted to see her favorite person, which is Taylor Swift. Um, however, she didn't get to because of all of her height of getting out of jail and all the people on social media liking her so much, uh, they ask her to move out of Missouri. They ask her to get out of, uh, get away from there because she was causing so much trouble for law enforcement. They were having to have security around all the time. So they wanted her to move. So even her parole officer said, please move out of this area. And they did. They moved to where her husband lives. So she didn't get to see the Kansas City Chiefs. She had bought tickets to go to the game. She did not get to see Taylor Swift. However, she did release a book on January the 9th. It was an e-book. It's called Release Conversations on the Eve of Freedom, which is, I have not read it yet. <laughs> so in total, this is the what happens. Gypsy meets a boy. They plan to kill the mother, Dee Dee. Dee Dee is stabbed to death 17 times. Gypsy is sentenced to 10 years. She only serves seven. And the male boyfriend, Nicholas, he's serving a life. She got granted interviews about her life and crimes. And it's becoming the subject of a documentary. It has been par part of television shows like Mommy, Dead, and Dearest and The Act. After years of twists and turns in this case, the public has a red eye on Blanchard to see what happens once she's freed from incarceration. Well, we'll talk about that shortly. But in part 12, I just want to go back over all the things that she did do so that you do understand why she might have felt like she needed to kill her mother. What did Dee Dee do to her daughter to get attention? And how did Gypsy see it? Here's the other part that most people don't seem to realize. Gypsy played along. I don't know if she left her mama, but goodness gracious. <laughs> She had a wheelchair. Gypsy knew was bogus because her inability to walk, she knew she could walk. She would wait until her mother was not in the room and she would get up, run around and do stuff in her room. And when her mother would come back, she'd get back in her wheelchair. So she knew she could walk. Uh, she had a feeding tube. I'm very sure that was horribly painful, but she dealt with it. She had a tube in her stomach. There's uh, pictures of her with the tube in her stomach and it was entirely unnecessary. She was able to eat. She was not not sick enough to, or sick at all, to keep her from eating. She had no friends, so her best friend was her mother.
and her mother's obviously was not a healthy situation. Her mother just wanted her to be sick. She did, however, get involved with the deception. And the reason she got involved with the deception, I believe, was because she got free things because of it herself. The medical staff, oh my goodness, it's so crazy. Why in the world didn't any medical staff stop this from happening? Why? While I, people can say that it was unwitting and they had no idea, but surely along the way, somebody tested. Surely someone knew that this poor child was being tortured. I don't understand why no one at all stopped this. Uh, Gypsy loved Disney, so at some point her mama got her a trip to Disney World. And again, I believe that's part of, part of it where I think Gypsy played along because she got free trips. They did things for her uh, several times to make her feel good. I I mean, I can see that part as a kid. I could see it that that part as a kid being wanting those special things and thinking, well, if I have to do this to d get that, sure, I'll do it. Then she knew she looked older, but she didn't tell her that she was older. Gypsy was prevented from knowing her actual age, often acting 10 years younger than she was. It is hard to see some of the pictures of her, though. There's uh, when she was older, they still put her, like, in the sink to give her a bath. It's just crazy that her mother did that. The illusion. As far as anyone ever saw, they all thought that they were happy, that they enjoyed each other's company, that they loved their family. Their life was great. Um, hard to believe that there was anything wrong because she never showed it outside the house. The house. Oh my gosh. They got a house. And the, the, the girl was not even sick just from faking and her mother being so cuckoo. It's just insane. She got the trips. She got the home. She got all kind. Uh, I think that she even had a van she had vehicles. She had all kinds of things that was able to help her. And they did had churches and, and, and other places donating to help her get what she needed. At the end, however, Gypsy finally finds happiness with after getting out of jail. But until then, she had nothing. She had nothing to do but spend time with her mother. And she thought her mother was doing everything right. She didn't know any different, I, I'm guessing. Um, she started this really young also. She, Dee Dee began her deception with Gypsy at only a month old. She completely robbed the child of any, uh, any normal childhood. She lived in hospitals. She took medication. She sh suffered. And she lied with her mama. Did Gypsy suffer? Yes, in most ways she would think so. She would go out with a brave face and she would act for her mama because she was scared of her mother. So that is all the horrible things that I, that I have noted. I'm sure there were other things that bothered her and that she needed to deal with, but those things are supposed to be some of the largest problems that she had and why she thought her only solution was to kill her mother, to get away from her. She didn't think there was any other way. So what's happening with Gypsy now? She got out of jail. She has newfound fame. She's all over the television. She's married to her husband, Ryan Anderson. They having the best time. The husband sits out in the audience and she goes on The View. She talks with all the people there and she tells them how she feels bad for killing her mother, but she doesn't. She she can't forgive her mother. She hasn't gotten there yet. Um, She is out of prison and she's happy about that. She served her time, she feels, and she feels like it's time for her to go on with her life. She's 32 years old and she has a a tremendous amount of people that follow her on social media. And again, don't come get me for telling what I've found, but I find it crazy. I find it crazy that she only went to jail for eight years. I find it crazy that the man that she uh, manipulated into killing her is going to serve forever. I just don't understand it. Um, she, the first thing she did when she got out of jail, selfie. I can see that. I can see that. Because I, I'm pretty sure she is still living out her teen fantasy. <laughs> because she never got to grow up. There's a lot I can see to total this in this out. I can see where Gypsy thought she might not have any other way. I can see some of that. But the other side of me sees that she was 19 years old. Yes, her mama told her she was younger. But I, I've seen teenagers. I've been around them. And they 
they could be very manipulative. So I could also see the other side where she's angry with this lady and wanted to kill her herself. And she may not have thought of it as her only way out. She just thought, well, if I kill her, then I don't have to deal with her ever again. So that's the end of my story. I'll be back. I'm not sure what my next one will be, but I think it's going to be on a serial killer. We'll see. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you have some comments for me, but don't try to tear me up for it. And uh, see you next time. Bye.